Anyway, as, at about the Murphy line, my wife called me and said, hey, we got goat, we got a goat on the ground. And I'm like, all right, we got it. She sent me a little picture of a caramel colored goat, it's wonderful. And then about, it wasn't long, it was probably about uh, a couple minutes later, she said, oh, we got another one on the ground. I had to help. I'm like, oh, okay, great. And then about the time I got to 544 and the 78 cutoff, she said, third one stuck. Uh -oh. And it was stuck for about four hours. So my wife lost not only the baby, but she lost her favorite doe. So it was, it was rough. But she didn't have time to mourn too much because now she had three bottle babies and one goat to milk. The next morning, we take the other doe, because you know we've had two does we had to pull uh, kids from, so we take her to the vet. The vet goes, okay, this is the smallest one you got, and them babies ain't coming out of her. So we had to do a C-section, and we lost both of those babies. So it's like we lost, what, five out of eight, and she's bottle feeding three. Luckily, uh, Kim Phelps had babyitis, so now she's bottle feeding one, and PJ's still bottle feeding two and milking two goats. Three times a day. Wow. So, since she didn't have anything else to do, you gotta follow me on this and hope I don't get caught up in my own tongue. Uh, this week, PJ pickled a peck of potent peppers. There you go. That's a good description. Pretty good. Now that being said, the peppers that uh, PJ perceived as potent were uh, properly produced for her proud partner and his picky palate uh -huh. and his peculiar passion for pickled products. Um, it's getting good. But the thing is, she could have produced them to be presented to the church as a proper precedent of salvation. Are you with me so far? That's all the P words I could come up with. Uh -huh. All right. All right, PJs, um, actually, I I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, PJs recipe. I actually put them in the jars and boiled them myself, but, huh? Yeah, she was busy nursing goats. Uh, oh, that came out wrong. She was bottle feeding goats. Yes. Um, anyway, these peppers, you know, she came up with this, this recipe, and I really love her peppers, and, and we've got like 20 quarts sitting in the cabinet. And I've often vowed to see how long they would last and still be good. And I can tell you one quart lasts less than a week. So I'm there, you know, it's like that, that Tootsie Pop, the world may never uh -huh. know. <laughs> right. Um, right. But they're very good, and, and, and I enjoy them. And got to thinking about it while I was popping the tops off these peppers and packing them in these jars. How it actually is kind of like salvation. People are going, wait a minute, pickled jalapenos and salvation. Not making the connection. Watch this. Wait just a second. Aha. Uh -huh. Hey, there's a stand you can hang that microphone on. Okay, we got, we got a guy right there. Bigger hands than I have. Oh, they're good. You put them on their tie. There you go. All right. I will let y'all know that I did do a bunch of sliced ones. I think that's some candy. Yeah. PJ's got. We just got them on a tray over here that's been cooked. You like jalapenos? Some of these are good, and 
mild and sweet. Some of them get on you. So, I'll pass this around too if anybody wants to pull one out. I might not get any further than that. I just handed it to Doug so it might not get past him. You gotta watch it. Alright, so what we've done, we took fresh jalapenos and we stuff on, you know, first we get our, our brine ready, uh -huh. then we get uh, our jars hot, we pack the stuffed jalapenos, we pack the fresh jalapenos in there just as tight as we can get it, pour the hot brine over it, put a cap and a, and a ring on it, screw it down tightly as you can see. We put the, put the jars in the canner, in the little pot, and boil them for 15 minutes. Now what happens after that is kind of funny because I've actually opened a jar just after they were, well, one of them kind of didn't seal real good, so I just popped it open and started eating them. Instantly, when it comes out of that bath, they're ready to eat. Just tastes like kind of And they're all tender and falling apart in your mouth if you don't watch out. But they're very good. They're very good. That needs to be a toddler. Now I know that when I was a kid, my grandmother used to <coughs> really, really put up a lot of food. And as I became a teenager, my dad got injured and, and was bedridden for a, a, a year. And my mom said that we wouldn't have survived had not my grandmother canned like everything. I mean, she she let it let it put it all in jars, and she had you know like this big huge root cellar and a closet full of junk that she canned. And some of it was canned when I was little. And here I am, a teenager eating this stuff. How long does it last? And everybody says, oh, a year. You can only guarantee it a year. Well, unless I aged a lot in a year, it lasted longer than that. So here I come and I and I and I'm looking at it. What what is the pickling process? What causes a, a jalapeno that will last, you know, a few days in the refrigerator to last years if we if we do it right. It's because the the brine, the water, and the, the spices and the, the vinegar soak into the, I mean, all the way through it, completely through it, and preserve it. <coughs> it eats out whatever oxygen or whatever it is that in there that causes it to go bad, and it preserves it. I'm going to go to the Bible here in Matthew. Matthew 19, 16. Y'all remember this story. I've talked about it a lot. Matthew 19, 16. Talking about a rich young ruler. And it says, Now when a, young, when a man came up to Jesus and asked, Father, uh, teacher, what good thing must I do to have eternal life? Why do you ask me what is good? Jesus replied, There, are only two, there, are, there is only one good one who is good, who want to go, well, I can't even talk today, just a minute. I've got those jalapenos running through my taste buds, and I'm going, oh, oh, Alright, uh, why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied, there's only one who is good. If you want to enter life, <coughs> obey the commandments. Which ones, the man inquired, already starting to make deals here. Jesus replied, do not murder, do not, kid, do not commit adultery, do not steal. Do not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother. Love your neighbor as yourself. All these things I have kept, the young man said. What do I still lack? Jesus answered, If you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have your treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. It says there that the man walked away saddened because he was rich. He walked away sad because he was rich. Now, does that mean that, all right, and Jesus did say that it's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter the gates of heaven. 
Does that mean that if we have money stored up, we're, we're well off that we can't get into heaven? Absolutely not. What he's saying was that you have to have a relationship. You have to give everything, all part of you, to God. I can tell you right now, if I just took those jalapenos, stuck them in a jar, poured vinegar on them, they wouldn't keep as long. Some of you ladies that have, have canned all your life, y'all probably know, they don't keep very long like that. You have to actually go through the process and get the, get the, the vinegar and the, and the water and all the spices infused into it. So at that point in time, Christ was saying, if you can live without sin, if you can live, and I loved it when he said, which commandments do I have to follow? Dude, there's only ten of them. Really? All of them. <laughs> if you can, and can follow all those ten commandments, which no one can, absolutely no one can. So here's Christ. <coughs> He's been crucified. By the way, this is Acts 1. In Acts 1, Christ has been crucified. He has been put in the ground. He conquered death. God rose Him from the dead. And in Acts 1, it says, uh, It says here in verse um, verse 3, After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days, spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift of my father, that my Father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And baptized, by baptized, when he talked about this, he meant total immersion. Just like a sinking ship. John, dunked you in water. My Father will dunk you in the Holy Spirit. Now, when he does this, the Holy Spirit, we we'll talk about, you know, the Holy Spirit comes into my heart. He does. He comes... He gets into the, the, the root of your soul. If you don't have a heart, you're dying. You're dead. As long as your heart's beating and pumping, your body can live. And there's probably a few people with medical degrees that's going to go, ah, just a minute. But truthfully, as long as your heart is pumping, you're considered alive, correct? <coughs> Pretty much. That is the core of our being. Now, the heart pumps blood through every cell in our body. Just as Christ puts His Holy Spirit in us, it goes through every cell of our body. Just like those peppers that, that gave you the brine got into every fiber of those peppers. Now, they don't taste like jalapenos anymore. They look like jalapenos. They don't taste or smell like them anymore. Why? Because it's a, a completely different thing. It's a different object now. It's a pickle. We may look the same. After we've accepted Christ as our Savior, He has put His Holy Spirit in us and it has infiltrated every part of our being. Every part. You might think, I mean, we might look just like the same old person. But we're not going to act like the same person. We're not going to look like, the, or we're not going to sound like the same person. We might smell like the same person depending on your... Uh, yeah. So anyway, but you're not the same thing. You're a completely different thing. You're now preserved by God. By His Holy Spirit. And just as those pickles will last, and I'm going to say probably years and forever, if it, as long as the, the, the integrity of the seal is not broken, we will last forever. It's hard for us to keep, get our mind ripped around forever. 
and eternity. Uh, there's one guy said that uh, if you, his interpretation of eternity is if you put a tape measure from here to the moon, the first little increment on that tape measure, what is it, a, a 32nd or a 64th on a tape measure? The first little increment is your life here on earth. The rest of it's eternity. That's a long time, folks. And that, and that holy brine, that holy spirit that gets into us courses through every cell in our body. That's what causes us to live forever. Christ said it himself. Wait here for the gift that was promised from my Father. As John baptized you with water, you'll be baptized by the uh, My Father will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. He will give you something that will preserve you. He will give you something that will make you last forever. And this body is going to go away. Now that's a... Uh, people say that's, you know, that's the thing about life is, is death is part of it. And that's great. Because the way my body feels these days, I probably don't want to last too many more of them. But as my body dies and decays, that Holy Spirit that's preserved me will take me to heaven to be with my Savior who is waiting for me. Now each of you have had a chance to taste of the peppers and, and, and if you came to our house you would probably see a whole cabinet full of them because I love them so much. But if I died today and BJ don't eat them and then she went on and Kirsten don't eat them, so she went on and, and her grandkids, Kirsten's grandkids maybe come up one day and go, you know what, these are peppers, I wonder if they're any good, and pop the seal on them. Imagine saying, you know what, my great-grandmother, something like that, <laughs> my great-grandmother made these years and years ago and they're still good. Imagine when we get to heaven and we walk in and we see all of our relatives that have gone before us, the ones that have had a relationship with Christ, gone before us, and we go, you know what? God made you years and years and years and years before. You're still good. You don't have to wear glasses. You don't have to use a cane. Hopefully we can still wear hats. But... Perfectly preserved. Think back in a time when you would like to be perfectly preserved. Back before any broken bones or diseases or anything like that. That, that would be about right. Think about what would happen to you if God came into your life today. If you have no... no Preservatives in your body right now. God came into your life today, right now. How much better you would feel. You could go through life and think, hey, look, the seal on this bottle ain't going to get broke. I can do whatever I want. But remember what I said. You might look the same, but you're not going to be the same. And yes, right now, I have Christ in my heart. I have the Holy Spirit that has preserved me. I am got my ticket to heaven and I could go out and commit mass murder if I wanted to but you know the thing is I don't want to why because I want to please my Savior I want to live for him I have a conscience that that tells me look this is wrong you would think that this is wrong that's the difference uh, a pastor friend of mine one time said, thank God for conviction. Because it lets you know that you have God in your heart. Because if you didn't have God in your heart, the things you do, you wouldn't be convicted for. And there'd be no, you know, seemingly there would be no consequences. But when you're convicted, you know you've got God in your heart. Or at least you know that you need Him in your heart if you haven't started that relationship. 
Now, how do we start a relationship with God? Yes. It's a simple process. It's, it's, it's talking to Him. How would you start a relationship with any? You would walk up to her and say, Hi, I'm Jane. Yeah. She probably bat your hand out of the way to hug you. But that's how you start a relationship. You start talking to them. And if I came to this church and I never said a word to her, never, there would be no relationship between us. But because I have, we have this friend, friendship, family relation that that you can't break. The same with Christ. Once you start talking to Him, talking to God His Father, and you have His Son that is that is paid the price, the Holy Spirit that is inside you, the three most important things in this in His world. All you have to do is start. Start with a conversation. I'm going to show you how to do that. If God's talking to you right now, I pray that you, you follow me in this prayer. Lord, Lord, I'm out here and I'm, I'm wasting away, Lord. I don't have anything to, to keep me going. Lord, I want you to fill me up with your Holy Spirit. Process me, Lord, that so I can, I can live with you forever. More importantly, I can live with you starting today on this earth. And know that I'll never be, never be forsaken, never, never be let alone. That you'll always be here with me. Lord, I thank you for Christ dying on the cross for me. And I believe that He did. I believe that He was buried and was risen three days later. That He lives with you today and forever. I confess Him as my Savior. Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Folks, that's the most important thing you can do. I don't care who you are, what you do, as uh, what that comedian say, I don't care who you are. That's important, right? Now, I'm going to take my cup of coffee. I'm going to go inside. I'd even steal those jalapenos back if I fist by Doug for them. I'm going to go inside and I'm going to sit down. Y'all come talk to me. If you have a concern, if you don't know what I've been talking about, if you don't know what's happening, you don't. You just need somebody to talk to, or yell at, or whatever. Come on in, talk to me. All right.